Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Average Superstar TV. I'm your host, Lauren Lepre. Please give us a like, subscribe, comment, and share. Please subscribe to us on Facebook and YouTube. We have a new episode that drops every Monday morning at 5 a.m., also available on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and Amazon. And this week, we go back into the convention circuit. For all us horror movie fans, we, we a lot of us travel the country to check all these things out. And standing here is one of the leading guys for one of the leading conventions. So I'd like to welcome, please give a warm welcome, everybody, to Ryan Scott Weber of the New Jersey HorrorCon. Thank you so much. Yes. It's awesome to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, um, lo- this love promoting all conventions i would say all the conventions give me great weekends of my life they just do just straight up i agree i agree i've had a lot of those good weekends even before i did the show yeah so Mm -hmm. well let's hit the rewind button so going back to your youth Mm -hmm. was horror something that just came natural to you or did this did you get Mm -hmm. the bug in your early teens like what's what's your history of your earliest memory of of loving horror movies. Well, I always, uh, always loved horror movies when I was little and I would, my parents would let me watch them. So that was good. Uh, you know, watch nightmare on Elm street, leprechaun people under the stairs, uh, you know, I would watch, be able to watch those even non horror movies. Like I went to see Pulp Fiction when I was 14. Um, and, uh, you know, I just had a love for movies always. Um, I started making my own movies and that led me to the conventions and, being at them and meeting celebrities and loving Back to the Future. Really, I met Tom F. Wilson at the first Chiller Theater I was ever at in uh, maybe 1999. I think it was 1999, maybe, um, or 2000. And um, so uh, I go way back with the shows, and um, I just love the vibe. So I, you know, and just horror was always... um, unique to me and like i feel like you know as an indie filmmaker i could always uh horror was kind of easier to do than like a comedy because you need somebody really funny to be in the comedy or a drama you need a really good actor and you know the horror genre the actors can be kind of okay (laughs) they they allow errors it's like the 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 genre that you could kind of get away with a few Mm -hmm. things yeah i really like that part of it and like i like the gore part of it and um make make it fake fake blood or special effects and um so i just really loved all the aspects of that and i saw at chiller um theater um really a a huge just a dedicated fan base and that's kind of what led me to kind of start making my own movies um and i showed four of them there um and uh it was standing room only um i was very proud of that and i was actually a guest at chiller for almost seven years in the same room with zachary the cool ghoul before he passed away um i was in that same room and i got close with him and uh they just kept having me back and it was a it just built to this whole thing where i was like okay uh i just this is what i love to do love to come i would look forward to conventions and the horror genre like just just being there all the time so so growing up like what, what were some of your favorite movies well definitely nightmare on elm street i think and like i said before people under stairs uh leprechaun warwick davis was amazing and jennifer uh, aniston yeah and mark, <laughs> and mark holton who's been on my show before yeah. uh, i got to meet warwick at one of the chillers as well um but i don't know i just uh i like Friday the 13th, like everybody else, too. And, like, you know, the normal Halloween. I mean, I actually appreciate Halloween later in life more than I did when I was younger. Um, and I like the obscure ones, too. Like, um, like I think it was, like, Return of the Living, Night of the Living Dead, and or just Night of the Living Dead. Um, like, the one that's black and white. I mean, that started all. The original. The, the, yeah. the birth of the flesh-eating zombie. Yep. Yeah. John Russo wrote that, and he's been on a bunch of my shows, too, and I've been lucky to have him. Um, I, the, I worked at a video store for 10 years, so I saw, like, every horror movie that ever came out. So. <laughs> um, it, I think that's anyone 
you know, anyone in the last, you know, since the flip of the century, you know, any teen. Yeah. I was definitely one of them, but I remember like I had nothing to do growing up. Oh, yeah. So I, we didn't have Blockbuster or Hollywood video that where, mm -hmm. I, where I grew up for a lot of years. So it was this mom and pop stores and yeah. I had nothing. To, I would go walk to the, to all of them. Yeah. And I would go to the horror movie and I would just read the box covers from front to back. And then you're yeah. like, Oh, this is that director. And then like, is that that guy from that movie? And you're just, you're walking back and forth with the box. And sometimes mm -hmm. like, yo, yeah. what are you doing over there? You're confusing things up. And it, I would it, just base it, it off of the cover. If it was a cool cover, I'd take it. And usually it's, it was nothing like the cover of the movie. Oh yeah. 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 And I remember all, I, I waited for rent one, get one free, like whatever mm -hmm. the week that was. Yeah. And it was like, it was like I was building a house. I was there for four hours. Like I could have watched two of them and brought them back mm -hmm. by now. But like it was always the first thing I picked up. The first two yeah. I picked up is what I rented, but I would have to inspect everything over again. <laughs> was, I, I, I love that era. I think it's like a a missed art. Yeah. I think yeah. I think you would tend to want to like the movie when you paid money and rented it compared mm -hmm. to streaming. Yeah. Um I, I just I would get movies for free because I worked at the video store, so I would just take everything I could out. And I I remember taking Night of the Demons once, and I was like, oh, this, I just love that movie. It was just so cool to me. And now that I get to have them at the show, it's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's just uh, it's like a, a total uh, dream come true in a way. So it's it's definitely I totally, I totally get you man but like grow the first convention i went to i was i, I was just floored like there, there they are you know this, yeah. this there they are like that's that's them and <laughs> i i remember <laughs> this funny thing i thought when you paid to get into a convention like to meet them was already part of the tab <laughs> so i remember walking up to the first two people i ever met uh the first one was guy we know named doug bradley mm -hmm. and i said oh this is so great oh mm -hmm. i was like I'll, I'll take this and then i had uh a hell hell on earth i'm one of them i'm a hellraiser three guy people oh, i don't okay. care i think it's a freaking great movie especially a club mm -hmm. thing but i brought that and uh we're going back years now when prices were way lower but uh he signs it and i start walking away he's like excuse me <laughs> he's like it's 30 dollars oh for the autographs and i'm like <laughs> oh Whoops. Number one, I don't I don't have a lot of money. I had enough to cover it. But two, I was like, Pinhead just told me all the money. I ain't freaking arguing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, here you go. But, but. Oh, yeah. You don't want to upset Hellraiser. No, I don't need chains. <laughs> or <forever>. Pinhead, I mean. <laughs> yeah. um, well, you know, it's, it's crazy because I still get asked that question all the time uh, in emails. They think that paying that one price is is and, and everyone's just free that's what they think right or yeah. are they asking you for that to happen well they they kind of ask if if that is the case and i said no you know each table has their own prices the celebrities set them and you know we have pro photo ops and you can take photos at the table i have to explain that it's some people just don't understand because they've never been to a show before so you know yeah it's what happens. Well, it, it it's crazy because for someone like me, I've been going to cons now 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I've seen all the Robert Englund's, you know, the Kane yeah. Hodders. Basically what I'm saying is I've seen all the icons. Mm -hmm. And and for me for a while, when I got like about 10 years in, I'm like, what are these conventions going to do to keep these things fresh? And then all of a sudden I'm like, why is there such lines for these people still? Mm -hmm. Then you start so realizing a new generation came in. Oh yeah, that, that's what's keeping it alive. Like you know, you're obsolete because you met everyone already. Yeah, but yeah, but that to it is, it's like to to new people that walk through the door, they're fresh. This is yeah. this, this is you ten years ago, you know. So I, well, that's I, why I, it's great. I try to like bring in the iconic people as well as the obscure people that you don't usually see, or you know, someone like you have been to shows so many times. I try to bring in some new people that never done a show before um, because I am also in the same boat where it's 20 been 20 plus years. And, you know, I would like to see some new people. Uh -huh. yeah. I also get a lot of the same people, but that's because people love them so much. And 
There's always know. those fans that they don't care how many times they come. They want to see them, you know. And Rose, like, one of them. Yes. You know what's crazy about her? The most is like she's all over the place, and I always see lines. She's never like played out. She's it's always she has a great personality. Lines. Her personality is amazing. So yes. that's really what um, she just has this warm, fuzzy feeling about her and she loves uh, her fans. She really does. In, in private conversations, she just is so happy and so, um, you know, excited to be there just like the fans are. And she'll so. get another uh, boost in the arm when Terrifier 2 comes out because she has a role in that too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm excited for that movie to come out too because I'm hoping I've been talking to Damien and uh, me too the producers about uh, having one of my band songs in the soundtrack. So yeah, I hope you get it. Uh, I, I helped those guys. <laughs> I was at uh, about 16 days of the shoot. So wow. awesome. uh, this isn't no big spoiler, but I play a DJ in a club nice. in that movie. That's and <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I could pull that off. And mm -hmm. uh, they the they had a Philly location, which I helped get, which was at the Fright awesome. Factory in Philadelphia. I always plug that because it's a great haunted house. Frank's a great guy. Everyone should check it out. But cool. very big part of the movie takes place there. That's all I'm mm -hmm. going to say. And fans should go check that out. If they travel across America to look at horror movie locations, yeah. add the Fright Factory in Philadelphia. When you see this movie, you'll know why. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be a big hit, and the, like the first one, and that movie really kind of defines what I'm trying to do with the shows in a way, where you know these uh, independent filmmakers are able to show movies like almost like a terrifier, or you know, and become something like you know have Art the Clown be this icon now, where he's everywhere, and and like you know you if that's why I want to include the film festival part in my show is because you can start there and end up being, you know, a John Waters or, a, or, a, you know, um, Amelia Kincaid or whatever. And you can be this, you know, or, or, uh, you know, this, you can, it's both ends of the spectrum basically. And, um, that movie is kind of a perfect example of that, like how they come from, the indie filmmaking of low budget to this huge blow up. Gosh, they're great. And then you know, you know, the, the Levy brothers, Jason and Michael, like oh, they're, yeah. they're great. Yeah. Steve, they're all great people. And, uh, I had them multiple times. Yeah. Uh, they're, you know, yeah. You, you know, everywhere. I mean, they're really accessible to the fans too, you know, mm -hmm. even online and stuff. So I, I think it's great. I think it's great that you have a, a film festival involved too. I, you yeah. know, I, I had my own out of the truck at Arrow Liberty massacre. So I understand about, it's important to give filmmakers mm -hmm. a stage to be seen. It, 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 it matters so much. I mean, uh, my film, my film, The Dark Military, was in yours uh, yeah. for best film and best director. You know, mm -hmm. years ago. So I always value great that. Movie. Yeah, it's thank a great you. Movie. And I, you know, I made four movies myself, and I know how hard it is to make one, and I know how how it just starts after you're done filming it, and the promotion is a whole nother part. So to promote these films. And to have people see them that you know that attend the show that normally wouldn't, it opens up another audience. And I know filmmakers like to win bigger awards, so I make our awards. They are the best <laughs> awards out there. I, I mean, I'm not yeah. blowing smoke. I, yeah. I mean, every time I see, I was like, if I get nominated for anything, I'm like, I want that. I want that. I want that because it's this. It's it's so unique. Yeah, it's Chris it really Waters. Is. It's so I think of Chris Waters' uh, props for that. Um, Cobweb Studios. He. He drew my Mary Horror poster for my first film. Um, he also just done all of my work for the show, like with anything that's a statue or, um, you know, a a prop, whatever. Um, he is amazing. But, um, you know, he drew the skull picture and then I put it into the New Jersey logo and did the blood. And so we kind of worked together on that. Um, and so it's so cool to have that as our logo and the words and I have my own too. I made, I made him make me one so that I have one at least. Um, but uh, he, it's, um, it's important to me that, you know, these filmmakers feel like they accomplished something by winning an award at our show. So, um, cause it, you know, it, it's not easy. It's not easy to make a movie. Um, 
it takes two years at least of your life. And uh, especially if you're writing, directing, editing, like I was, um, it's it uh, consumes your life. And I'm it's like, it, it, it totally does. And a lot of people who don't make films don't understand that, you know, in other countries, the government gives grants and stuff for film festivals. And yeah. if you get in to a film festival over there, the film festival has money to fly you and even put you up in America. Yeah. You're on your own. So yep. you could get nominated and be like, cool, but mm -hmm. you just bought your own self your plane flight yeah. or, or your drive and you got to go there all by yourself. And it's basically, yeah, we, congratulations. We to... it's congratulations. You have another bill. That's basically what I call that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we try to keep it low. Like I always oh, try yeah. to keep like, it's like 20 or $30 at the most, usually depending on when you submit it, leave the early submissions. You know, I try to, I actually don't even make enough, uh, the submission money doesn't even make enough really to put the sh the, the film festival on. Um, it's that doesn't matter to me. It's really um, I want to keep it low because I know how much money people have to spend on the movie to make it. Yes. So because I've been there, and then once you're yeah, entering it, twenty, it, thirty, you're, you're forty well festivals, it, I think you're well in reason. And top it all, like you're playing a horror fest with your favorite mm -hmm. horror icons downstairs, and you know it yeah. it, 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 it it's. I think you do it. You do justice because I, I see some of these film festivals that are just pure scumbags, and they're charging like eighty-five, a hundred dollars mm -hmm. for for you know yeah. for ninety minutes to watch your film. Who's getting paid a hundred dollars to watch a movie for ninety minutes? No, you know yeah. that's you know. Um, and the feature films are. I noticed this. I learned a lot about this. Really, as doing the film festival, it's really hard to get a feature film in a film festival because it takes up so much time so much of time. the film festival. Yep. And you're much better off putting in a short film, um, but we do we do a lot of full lengths too. We try to put as many as we can in. Um, and now that we have the House of Blues at the Showboat to have to show the movies, we have a giant screen there. It's you know sounds really good. It's all built in. Um, I think it's making a big difference. The past couple shows, we we've uh, really stepped it up. I think that in the the you know viewing process. So yeah. you, we, we kind of jumped right into the con. What? <laughs> let's back up a second. Okay. How, when did you know you wanted to do a convention, and like, how did it all come together? Um, well, after doing the Chilla Theater, I was promoting my films there, um, paying money for a table, even though I was a guest. I was still paying because I was selling my merchandise and all that. It wasn't a lot, but I was still paying. Yeah, and I, you know, I just. I used to do punk shows a while ago when I was in my band in the beginning when I was like 15, 16. And I kind of just, you know, thought, okay, I'm on this. I used to promote shows. I used to do this. And maybe why don't I just try to put my own show on? And why am I paying for this table? I'm going to put my own show on and help other filmmakers because I'm struggling here. And I'm, you know, at the time, I, I didn't know if I was going to make another movie because it takes so long. And, uh, I definitely want to do it eventually, but um, I haven't in four or five years, and I was making them consistently every year. I was making something, um, and uh, but I said, you know, I feel like this is meant to be in a way where it's like, okay, I can feature a film, I can show other people's films and movies, and then also I love the celebrity side and the filmmaking side, uh, film the the actors and actresses and directors and being guests and going to conventions myself. So I was a fan. I was a vendor. I was a filmmaker. I was a guest at some of the, at Horror Hound, at Chiller, at Bizarre AC, whatever. And I just had all those experiences of every aspect of the show so that I was like, I have to do this. Um, and it was, I just love being creative. And it was like the ultimate creative thing I could think of, I think. Um, I know there was other shows, and um, I didn't want to step on toes. I didn't want to um, do the same thing they were doing. I wanted it to be a little more indie and more like obscure. Um, you want to stand alone. Movie. Yeah, you want to stand alone the best you could. Yeah, and like we were in Edison at first, and yep. it was so small. And it, I mean, the Q and A's and the film festival was in the same room. Yeah, it was a tiny little ballroom. And we had vendors in the hallway and everything. The roof was leaking. It was like a disaster. 
but we had John Waters come and he was just incredible first big guest to have um, because he's like indie film like yep. he's one of the big guys and um, for him to say yes and to come was amazing and um, from there I just like you know I just I wanted we needed something bigger we needed something better and I wanted to get away a little from the other shows and you know going down to the showboat in Atlantic City was like the best idea to me and I had the biggest space and we I'm like it, was, it just I had no limits down there and, and, and so, you got you got you got the shore i mean people could go outside and get yeah. air and they're on the beach mm -hmm. yeah um and i wanted to stay i wanted a place to call home for the show and we've been there a while now uh, i don't know how you know how long it will, oh, will end up lasting but um you know we're still there and they treat us great and uh they kind of let me come in and do my own thing and if I heard right, I believe next to the showboat, that parking lot in between that and Ocean, I believe they bought that and they're going to make the world's biggest indoor water park is what I thought yeah. I heard down there. So It's a $100 million <laughs> water park. Um, they've been talking about it for a couple of years now. Yeah, I guess um, they're finally going through. So, uh, you yeah. know, anyone needs to cool off, you know, from the con. <laughs> it's indoor. Get the blood off the your first. Don't go in there like that. Yes. <laughs> It's indoor, but the ceiling like opens up. Um, it's that whole parking lot open area, but the um, the parking garage they own, the Hard Rock owned that, and now they own it back. So that's where everyone would park. Yeah. Um, I feel like eventually soon, I would say. I know April will definitely still be on the floor, but I I I'm pretty sure we're going to end up moving to the second level and having the show up there, which. I'm not opposed to because it actually worked out pretty well. Um, the one time we had to do it for Army of the Dead because they were. I remember filming. that. Yeah, yeah, that was filming. They made a whole soundstage down there, and they didn't tell me till ten days before the show. Um, That's very nice of them. <laughs> so, well, there was like there wasn't a lot of uh, people working there at that time. Now it's a whole another story, but and and it's also the only in Atlantic City wise. The only dog friendly hotel where you could yes. actually mm -hmm. stay there with your dog and you're allowed to bring your dog anywhere. So, mm -hmm. I, I, what's one thing I like about yours? Yeah. Is all, you're, you get to pet all these dogs. <laughs> right? yeah. I just can't help. I keep, I keep stopping for it. It is a good dog. thing. I love dogs. And yeah. um, I lost mine in July, but it's, uh, he was 13. But um, I think Sorry he's, uh, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. I, he, you know, he, yeah. uh, Every, every, lived a long life. Yep. Um, I wish I could have brought him down there, but he wouldn't have lasted. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I love the ground floor and all, but with the water park being there and the arcade, it might be better to be upstairs because we have that whole level to ourselves. And also the film festival will be closer um, to the show. And that's kind of what I like is everything together in one Yeah. Place. Yeah. So... Huh? We'll see what happens, but we plan on staying there right now. Um, and I mean, I think it's a perfect place with the beach and everything. And there's so much to do afterwards. And um, it's a destination for people to go and have a good time for a weekend. So, so do you, are you last year you ran there three times? Is that happening this year or just twice? Um, it looks like it's probably just going to be um, April and September, and okay. then. So you're going, back, a, you're going back to two, but you're spread out in, in Pennsylvania now, so you're not really off yeah. the hook either. <laughs> well, we did we did um, three just to kind of make up for not doing one yeah. last year, so I wanted to still do. That was a like huge, huge, huge void for a year, mm -hmm. not having any kind of – you don't get to see everybody. you know. So I, I still was doing shows, but they were outside. Yeah, um, I came – <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah, they were like little small ones, and um, Felicia yeah. Rose was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and we can only do you know whatever we were allowed to do, but we did them and we followed the rules. And um, you know, we didn't have an NJ Harakon for a while, but that's why I did the the third one, and um, it worked really well in November actually. So we might do it again, but because I have two PA Harakons and two New Jerseys, so there's four, and then. Yeah. We have the new show, Classic Rewind Weekend, which is like a nostalgia show. Yes, smart and idea. Then I might do a second one of those. So we'll see if how it goes. But um, I, I really like the November show 
based on I, I I always hate when Halloween ends and that falling week the clocks go back yeah. and it just really is a dabber. So like that was you had that the second week of November, yeah. and I felt that was an extra jolt in the arm. Like okay, we're you yeah. know like you know we're, it was we're one of our best shows. going for a little while longer, another two weeks. I'm cool with this. It was one of our best, I think, and uh, I don't know. It was something. There's a good vibe about it, and I was surprised because uh, like the winter months are hard yeah they are the show so you know it was a, uh, i think people just wanted to get out and uh, and have fun and you know it was well attended and it was good it was you know our september show was a little tough i thought but you are because of it. you went you tried labor day weekend i think yeah, i i it was the only date that we could get there yeah um and we were actually one of the original like events there and like us and garden state comic fest were there in the beginning and then but now there's all these boxing events and other things going on so i have to juggle i have to plan my dates early or we lose our weekends yeah you think you have seniority right that you could just kind of (laughs) they have you know they have to run a business too but um like i think it's the seventh the weekend of the 17th this time um I think let me just I have the dates here. I think it was um go for it. Yeah, it's September sixteenth, seventeenth, and eighteenth. Okay. This year. And I have eight shows actually this year. Um which we did one already January eighth, uh, which is the sideshow market, which is like a smaller in a mini con. Yeah. Um, which is really cool too, because it's more personable with the guests and stuff and, and the celebrities and, and there's really great vendors. We really try to concentrate on the vendors on that show. Uh, March fifth and sixth is PA Horicon. April eighth, ninth, and tenth is New Jersey Horicon at Showboat, and then we do another sideshow on May fourteenth, and that's outside um, of the hotel in Allentown. That we it's um, turning into a Delta Marriott um, in Allentown, um, and then the new show, the Classic Rewind Weekend, is on June twenty fifth and uh, June twenty fourth, fifth, and sixth. Um, that's this nostalgia of seventies, eighties, nineties, and thousand two thousands. Uh, celebrities all genres tv shows movies um i just kind of did the 70s and 80s so far so you'll be seeing a lot more guests come out good, that. good, good. Hey, that's all dude that's a lot like when you're getting phone calls about them you you got to be confusing the dates right you have to <laughs> I, be. I have to keep uh my excel sheets all yeah i'm gonna <laughs> say but like what kind is this one coming to like, i don't yeah. know i don't know how you do it well you know i got it down to a little bit of a formula now so it that's why I've expanded a little bit to and PA really like that Allentown area they love horror and like it's such a great place to do shows Um, and we're going to do another one there too in August so um, and then September will be New Jersey again and then there's a sideshow in October but then November's open right now so we'll see what ends up happening with the either another New Jersey horror con or a Classic Rewind Weekend, yeah. one of the yeah, other. Yeah, see, all pans out, man. You already got enough on your plate. But. Yeah, well, you know, I love doing it. It's uh, a lot of work. It's a 24-hour job. But I really love what I do and bringing people together. And, you know, it just makes me happy to to provide, like, kind of a um, – in this tough time, too, like something fun to do. Absolutely. So more uh, downer note in the last couple of weeks. I uh, you know you had one, one of your big guys that helped you a lot, mm-hmm. Robert Bruce. Yeah. He, he passed. Yeah. Yeah. He was, I was he, really upset about that. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody knew him. Like everybody, he everybody was a did. known guy. And like, like a, he knew everything. He knew so much about things, about nostalgia and pop culture. That's why they call him the pop cultures. Um, you know, I, I unfortunately in the past couple of years, about two years now, we haven't really talked. Um, okay. I don't even know what happened because we always, we never fought or anything, but it just kind of, I guess we kind of had a just fall off. And I was doing so much with the show and he was his own things going on. And, you know, um, it just kind of business wise, um, we weren't communicating. Um, but as a person, he was an amazing person, really. And uh, I really, uh, I was honored to know him and be with, uh, you know, work with him. In the beginning, I asked him, I said, you know, I'm new to this convention thing. And he did Asbury Park Comic Con. And I asked him to kind of 
be like my my uh, guide a little bit and mentor and help uh, with this, the shows. Um, and he did so much and connect me with so many people. And uh, so he's, def have, he's definitely a footer in the foundation of what, what uh, you have yeah. going, right? Yeah, and uh, he definitely was. And um, he was a big part of getting it off the ground and everything. And uh, it was, he knew a lot of people, um, like even vendors, I mean, especially vendors. Um, and he, being part of Comic Book Men, he brought Ming and uh brian johnson and all them to the show and uh it's sad because he was so young and um i don't even know what really happened um i donated to uh i don't know either to, you the, know? to the memorial fund um to help his family um i just i don't know because i lost communication i don't really know what happened but he was a really great guy like i we had so many great conversations so many times meeting up and talking we could talk for hours yeah so um he had a huge collection of things that were like probably worth so much money and he knew it but no one else did <laughs> um i remember one time i went to his old office um in this it was like a on uh, the second floor of a house and i had to like squeeze through because it had so much collectibles to get through to his desk so um he uh i don't know I, it's it's really it upset me a lot when i saw that and uh i hope you know i i my condolences to his family and his sons and he loved them so he always talked about his kids so it was uh it's tough these days everybody kind of falling off i feel like a lot of people so it, it it is and at the same time i mean i can't say there's people I, I don't fall off with every so often it's like you don't know when your time's up and no. how, how could you really be that perfect of a human to keep up with everybody you yeah. know too so it's one of those you wish you could have yeah you knew but you don't no one I ever always knows. you know and i it was a little strange because like i he just he didn't like kind of just stopped talking to each other, but then he stopped coming to the, sh the shows and I had tables for him set up for him to vend. And um, I just, I don't know what ended up really happening because there was no arguments or anything like that. It was always real great conversations. So I think he just kind of, you know, kind of split apart and he was doing his own thing. And, um, but I really, you know, I, I love the guy. I thought he was a great guy. And uh, it's a shame because he's like only 62, which I didn't even know how old he was. <laughs> I didn't know either. I thought he was in his late 50s. So regardless, 62 is young. I mean, it is. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I don't know what happened. I But I hope I just, you know, hope he didn't suffer or anything like that. But yeah. I just, yeah. it's a shame because he was, he was, uh, I really, uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, working with him but he he was difficult to work with sometimes because he really wanted we're both wanted it our way so yeah well <laughs> that's, that's the east coast mentality right yeah. <laughs> yeah. everyone everybody's the alpha so yeah and, yeah and i'm sure you know he was he was very proud of the show and the show and the shows we did so yeah um i'm happy he had that that happiness and and that we were able to he was able to see that and i'm going to just keep going uh forward to you know do the best shows i can every time that's kind of what i always set out to do so good good and so yeah so i mean well, is there a guest out there that you're trying to get maybe even that something like other cons are trying to get you know and you're kind of trying to score them are some of these because to me the cons changed about 10 years ago because if you remember, they were all kind of twenty and maybe mm. some twenty five dollars, and and then all of a sudden, astronomical prices for a lot of these uh, for the, these guests. But do you think that's just the way things have been changing, or does this have to do with all the agents getting involved because um, they get out of it? Uh, is that why the prices are going so are fluctuating? 
I feel like it has to do with people just trying to see how much they can get for an autograph. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, people get mad at the show promoter sometimes or that, oh, but your they think you're making so the high, price, right? We don't make it. Yeah, we don't make it. We, we, we're we told what it's going to be. Um, the only thing we add on is for our photographer, for the pro op, photo ops, usually, it, you know, there's a 5 or $10 add-on because they have to get paid that way. So yeah. um, besides, in a lot of shows, actually, the promoter does add on money for the photo ops. I don't do that. Um, but I like to keep things inexpensive. So um, I, don't, I, I feel like it's the celebrity and the agent. I feel like it's both where they are trying to see to gauge it. But I find that the person that has – the lowest prices makes the most money, most money because of the deal. And um, I think it's not smart to be too high. And I actually have said a few times to some of the celebrities, I think this is too high. And I think you should go a little lower just because, because of, you know. When, when you really think about the way it used to be, this the simple $20, yep. if there's a lot and you're making $20 a minute, to yeah. meet someone who thinks you're amazing. Yeah. A minute. It's not. And yeah, you have to get a free photo op. Yeah. Photo. It's just one of the reasons, uh, you know, one of our legends is passed on, but like Sig Hag, he didn't, he wouldn't change his price. I know he was outspoken about that, but some of the prices that mm -hmm. these other, you know, people were trying to charge. Yeah. You know? I, I, I in my experience, keeping it low, it will, well, your line will be out the door. Um, but if you're too high, they're going to look at it and walk away. And it sucks because they want to, if, even if they, you know, I've seen people say, oh, I love this person, but I'm not paying that much or whatever. Because you're paying to get in. I'm, I'm absolutely with them on that. Yeah. I mean, there's, you're paying to park. You're paying this. You're paying for a hotel room. It all adds up to a lot of money. And then you get there and it's like, this is crazy price. So. I've walked I, away before. I, I've heard. Uh, I mean, I stopped getting autographs when I jumped into the film world. You know, you're 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 trying to be a par. I'm hoping one day I hit something that I could be doing cons. You know, like that's mm -hmm. really the end game. But you know, I, I, I've I've always found some of these people that are like a hundred hour mark or even more. They're meeting you for one minute, mm -hmm. and some of them aren't smiling. Oh, some yeah. of them aren't. Like this is a big or experience like man, for someone to stay in line. Yeah. For, for, you know, like it's a hundred dollars, put a fake smile on. I don't, I don't care what it is. Like mm -hmm. someone's handing you a hundred dollars a That's, minute. I feel like most of, most of our guests, almost all of them are really generally happy to be there and happy to meet fans. Just like as happy as they are to their celebrity. Yeah, a hundred bucks is. I think it's way too high. Um, maybe for Robert England or something like that. But I, I got him for I twenty dollars back in the day. But yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if it's somebody you really love, you'll pay anything. But like, I, I, you'll feel ripped off at the end of it. So I, I always encourage people to stay in the thirty to forty dollar range. Um, yeah. I think that's reasonable, and you'll get a line. And that's why I see. You know, Felissa, I see um, Tiffany Shep, Shepis and uh, great girl. Alex Vincent. Yeah, great like, guy. You know, all those guys are, have lines. And Clint Howard, too, last show, he was he was really inexpensive. And he was, I think it was 50 or 60 for both, for a picture and an autograph. And then, you know, that's why he has a line. And that's why this other person doesn't. So it's also about personality, too. And if you look intimidating or if you're on your phone or uh, you're looking down, you don't look engaged. Yep. Some people don't want to come up to you. So it's uh, that, that hurts me too. Cause as a promoter, if they have a guarantee and they're there to make it, if they act that way, I'm not going to have you back because you're not going to make your money or because you're a Debbie downer or you're, you know, looking at your phone the whole time. Yeah. Like I want someone that's going to be engaging with fans, and that's why a lot of them come back. 
So. Have you have you gotten from people you've had before? I know you have a establishing relationships, like you're talking about with Felicia Rose. Like she's yeah. out a lot, but I mean, have you got someone whose head got blown up? You know, I'm not saying name names, but like it was this price last time, and now it's this price for a guarantee. Or you're like, what? What happened here? Like, what, what are you what are you trying to do here? Um, maybe once or twice, but I most of the time not really. I think the ones that do a lot of the shows, they know. They know what to, to price it at. Um, and, you know, it's it does. that's why on a lot of the contracts that I do, or even before I have a contract, I ask, what's your prices? You know, what are your prices? What do you charge? Because it's good to have it in writing and good to know before they get there. Um, I've had a few people change their prices or agents change their prices when they get there. And then I had a lot of fans upset. So, um, you know, it can happen like that, but hope, but you know, hopefully it doesn't happen that much, but it's, uh, I think with the guests that we have, I think the prices are, are usually reasonable. Um, that's why I try not to get someone that big. We, at, at one time we were getting pretty big guests and I kind of scaled that back just because of that issue with the pricing that I, the fit come they spend you know this amount of money on the celebrities this amount of money on the vendors and it's kind of even and the vendors are happy the celebrities are happy when you have these big prices for celebrities they don't spend their money on the vendors and then you don't have your vendor doesn't want to come back and you know it's you know vendors are as important as celebrities to me so not a doubt. Yeah, you know, but I, you've done it. I've done it. So yeah, you know, you're, yeah. You're, we experienced every side of this. You know, so oh, yeah. You, yeah, you know, so it's cool. important. It's really important. Um, I love all our vendors, and we've had ones that are still doing the show since the beginning. So um, we're really lucky because I shop them all the time. Um, I try. I try to at least. <laughs> Sometimes I don't have time because I'm running. I'm running past you like this. So <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's uh, you're like hosting a party where you, you can't really have fun at is really what you're, what you're well, doing. Yeah, you put the party on for everybody else yes. and yeah. that's okay with me. Cause that's what I know. I have, that's my, that's, I know that's my job. And I, you know, literally every five minutes, there's a fire you have to put out. I yep. think last, last time someone got stuck in the elevator, the fire alarm went off in the parking garage Somebody's purse was stolen off the floor. Um, there was somebody stealing badges. There's like, it was just uh, one thing after another. How do they even um, steal a badge? What are these people doing? Setting their badges down? Is that what they're doing? I don't know. Somebody yeah. or one of the somebody was asking for badges or trying to to buy them off somebody. Um, one of the agent's purses were, was stolen off her chair, but it came back. If they were trying to buy the badges. Why won't they just buy the ticket? They're still getting inside. <laughs> Trust me, I don't know. I have a great security team. I have a great um, escort service um, for the celebrities, um, black jacket um, escorts. And uh, Joe Sumo and his guys, they are amazing. Um, they make sure everybody's safe and and then Chris Sarney, who was who's at the front of my uh, uh, area, and he kind of just make sure oversees everything. And like the minute the purse, they heard the purse was stolen, they locked down the the exits and uh, wouldn't let anybody in or out. And then it was returned in like five minutes. So nice. Very, you know, Atlantic City is a little rough sometimes with crime, but um, luckily. Um, most of the, we have some things stolen ourselves, believe it or not. But um, it, for the most part, we've been okay. So, and I have an overnight security team, a couple of people that walk the floor, make sure the vendor stuff is safe, um, and all that. So, great, great. We are, we're, you know, it's it's a twenty four hour job. Even I don't really sleep, especially at the shows. I'm always up texting <laughs> or calling or on the floor fixing a banner or a table or something like that. So it's always, always moving, but I love it. So Sweet. 
All right, Ryan. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Why don't you? I know you got like so many shows. <laughs> That's okay. Feel free to plug away. The floor is yours. Well, you can go to njharacon.com for New Jer- all of New Jersey Harcon's info. Um, we have shows there April 8th, 9th, and 10th as a showboat in Atlantic City. Uh, we have Eric Roberts and Tiffany Shepis and a, a bunch of other great guests. You can check on the guest page. Um, and then PA Horicon is actually coming up next, uh, March 5th and 6th. Um, you can go to pahorricon.com for all that. Um, and that is at the Delta Marriott. It's going to become a Delta Marriott. It's a center hotel right now in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, we have about 20 guests there. There's probably about 30 guests at New Jersey Horicon. Um, over 100 vendors at New Jersey Horicon, about 60 of them at PA. It's a little smaller venue. It's only our second PA Horicon. Um, and then I have a new show, Classic Rewind Weekend, which is on June 24th, 5th, and 6th. And that's at the Showboat as well in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And also, I, I'm doing a couple horror sideshow markets, which is kind of like a mini con. Um, there's about five celebrities and then about 50 vendors. And that's uh, May 14th uh, in Allentown at the Delta Hotel outside in the parking lot. And then I think I'm doing another one of those in October, too. Sweet, sweet. So, and you're um, also features. Yes. And you're uh you're on Instagram, Facebook, and all that stuff too, right? Uh Ryan uh, Ryan Scott Weber and then uh, is me and then NJ Harakon and PA Harakon are the handles for that. Um sweet. classic rewind weekend as well. Sweet. But thanks so much for this. This is awesome. And absolutely. I hope, and I I we could talk say, again more when something else happens. Absolutely. And I would just say, uh, tell I always say this at the end. Thank you to for my audience here. Thank you for everyone who tuned in. Thank all the convention people that are going to be checking this out. Yeah. Please give us a, a like on Facebook and Instagram under Average Superstar TV. Please give us a like, subscribe, comment, and share on YouTube. And we have a new show that drops every Monday morning. And we're also available on Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. So, Ryan, one more time, I thank you so (laughs) much for being a part of this. Thank you so much. And with that, I see you at the shows. Yes, check those shows out, and uh, we'll see you next week. 